Hello, my name is Melody, and on behalf of my group, I would like to welcome you today and start on our group presentation. The focus of our project was on the history and culture of Japan. To start off, Japan is often known as a nation that has an aptitude to develop new technology and incremental innovation. However, Japan was not always fond of embracing a new contemporary culture and deviating from their tradition. In fact, Japan had transitioned from an era focused on strict isolationism, known as the Edo era, to the Meiji era, which was the period of time recognized as the beginning of modernization. With the adoption of Western techniques and imperial ambitions, Japan ventured out from the classical arts and enforced new styles, which gave rise to many new art forms. The visual arts that we will be discussing today are the practice of anami, traditional tea ceremonies, the kimono and geisha, Japanese theater, wood printing, and shoro, otherwise known as Japanese calligraphy. Arts and literature have always been very important aspects of retaining the cultural traditions of Japan. Although different forms of art, such as wood printing and kabuki, have blossomed during the Edo period, it was not until the Meiji period that Japan had fully flourished within the craft. The Meiji period marked a momentous time of artistic diversity and introduction of internationalism. The topic that I will be discussing on today is the history of the kimono and the geisha. To begin with, the kimono is defined as wearing thing in English. It is a traditional Japanese robe, which has now turned into a fashion garment that confers a sense of identity for the Japanese people. Historically, the very first ancestor who owned a kimono was born in the Heian period. The design of the famous garment had not flourished until the Edo period, and at that time, it was defined as a kosode, which meant small sleeves. A unisex article of clothing constructed simply from straight cuts of fabric sewn together and characterized by small armholes. Within the last era of traditional Japan, the kosode was worn by everyone, and it had become a cultural indicator that represented what age, gender, and socioeconomic position an individual possessed. At that time, there are regulations on what color, design, and type of fabric that a person could use to make the kosode, which is based on one's social status. By the Meiji period, the kosode was then changed to the term kimono. In contrast to the Edo period, the Meiji era encouraged women to wear the kimono while men were encouraged to adapt to Western clothing. Women became the curators of traditional culture and the kimono was beyond practicality. It was a form of symbolism and identity. With the fundamental change that began to take place during the Meiji period, the kimono gradually became a reminder of Japan's traditional culture and became a fashion statement of the country's beauty and values. Referring back to the phrase of how women were curators of Japanese tradition, the geishas played a crucial role in preserving traditional Japanese culture. If we research the origins of the geisha, the beauty of this craft was not always respected. Before the 16th century, some geishas were just entertainers, but many were forced into a tragic fate of prostitution. However, these sexual sectors were soon banned as the geisha enjoyed a rise of popularity amongst the foreign affairs and created their own niche as artists. By the 18th century, geishas were defined as professional female entertainers. They performed through the ancient traditions of dance, tea ceremonies, and music. One of the defining characteristics of the geisha is the kimono. Geishas have formal kimonos known as de, which includes elaborate hairstyles and white makeup to match their outfits. It has been said that a kimono is the largest expense of being a geisha, as the kimonos are made from the finest silks and tailors. They are known as the living embodiments of Japanese arts as they help maintain traditional dance, the practice of tea ceremonies, and the use of traditional music in the modern world. Becoming a geisha requires years of laborious training, and there are various levels that a trainee must complete before mastering the craft and obtaining the label as a geisha. In the end, geishas embrace a lifestyle that follows strict rules, discipline, and the pressure of maintaining a high social reputation amongst the
Thank you for listening to our presentation.